practices have the transmission to liberate that energy, to liberate that consciousness, to bring the knowledge. To bring the knowledge. So we'll talk a little bit just to have some context, but it's really the meditation practices that we're doing today that is the focus of the immersions because that's what gives you your own understanding of your prana and how your prana affects your consciousness. Your own understanding. And it's only when you stand in the authority of your own understanding that that experience awakens. And you see, what we find is that we've come to that point, and I can see by looking around the room that everyone here is either a yoga teacher or a very long-term yoga student. And we've come to that point that we need to get more subtle, isn't it? That to understand more about the dimensions of our being, about who we are, we need to awaken this perceptive quality. We need to get more subtle. And how do we do that? How do we do that, Damini? How do we awaken this perceptive quality so that we can experience not just the thinking mind, not just the physical body, not just a bit of the breath, but how do we really experience this inner field which affects the mind and gives insight to the more subtle dimensions of the mind? And what's more subtle than the mind is the consciousness. How do we do that? Turning the mind inwards. Turning the mind inwards. And that's what we've been learning. That's why we came to yoga. We understood that the reality we know is a little fixed, is a little bland, that there's something more. There's something more to who we are. And so we've begun by turning the mind inwards. We had to start with the physical body. We have to move into the breath, which is a way into this pranic field. We've become very good at observing our mind, the thinking mind, that is. We've got a way to go with the psychic energy, the subconscious, the samskaras, the spiritual energy. But we've become very good. You know, mindfulness is very, it's very popular now. Psychology. We've, we've learnt these concepts and we've become quite good at observing our different thoughts and where they're coming from and how they go round and round. But to become more subtle, we have to focus our attention in a more subtle dimension. We're not going to experience this subtle dimension in the body or the thinking mind. We've tried that. We don't progress so much. So we have to start focusing the awareness in a more subtle dimension. And this is the essence of the ancient yoga. You see, we've learned in our asana practice, we've learned about the anatomy of the body, isn't it? The muscles, the tendons, the systems, the effects that the practice have on a physical level. We know how to induce relaxation and to let go of stress. And you see, this is just an outcome. We need it. We can't move further without having that ability. But we get a little hooked on that. But this is just a side outcome. These practices, the asana, was developed because of the effect it has on the vital field, on the pranic field. And so even in our asana practice, we're not so focused there. Maybe a few are, but we're not so focused on how the energy is flowing, what it's doing. And this is the energy that supports the physical body. The body can't exist without it. So even in our asana practice, we still have quite a way to go to becoming more subtle, becoming more subtle. So we start to focus on this subtle body that directly connects to the physical because it's the easiest for us to access. It's interior to the physical body. We're working from the outside in. So it's the easiest for us to access. And you see this pranic field has dimensions. It has dimensions. So we have the field of prana directly related to the physical body. And then we start to look at the nadis, the pathways in which the energy flows, the chakras, the storage points for the energy. 
And when we do that, we're establishing our awareness inside. Inside. So mostly we've been working outside in, and we need to do that. We're refining our awareness. But when we start to move into these pranic practices, we're establishing our awareness within. We're awakening a perceptive quality. And you see, it's not so easy. It's not so easy because we've been so externalized our whole life. We've taken a physical birth and we've been so externalized. And when we start to focus on this more subtle dimension, for some people, they start to feel it, they see the light and they feel the vibration immediately. But for most of us, we have to soak it a little, we have to keep coming back, we have to keep awakening this perceptive quality. And you see... Clean it, you need to clean it. Yeah, we've got a lot to do there. <laughs> we've got a lot to do there. Because this is our life. This is the field that gives energy to the body, that gives energy to the mind. This is the field, this is the kosher. Remember in our last immersion, we really went through the koshas and we spoke about the pranamaya kosha. And the reason the ancients focused on the pranamaya kosha is that they found it has a direct influence on the other koshas. That by enhancing the vitality of pranamaya kosha, immediately it's felt in the physical body, it's felt in the mind. And not only that, it's that it gives awareness to the other dimensions. You see, this is the beauty of it, this is the key. It's not just that we're becoming subtle and familiar with the energy, it's that it's awakening the awareness. The awareness is becoming more refined. And so we start to become a little bit more multi-dimensional. Multi-dimensional. So we're having that subtle awareness, the thinking mind, the subtle mind, the psychic, the body, the prana, what's happening, how it's interacting, how it all comes together. We're having a more subtle awareness. And beyond that is the consciousness. Beyond that subtle awareness is the consciousness. And we can see that every single yoga practice we do, it relates to these two principles. We can say the light, which is energy, which is prana, the light and the consciousness. These are the two principles of our life. This is who we are. Light assumes a quality of life force, of creation, light, prana, energy. And the consciousness and every practice we do relates to these two, whether we know it or not, whether we, sometimes we don't know it. But that's what it relates to. And what has been found is that when we focus on the light, on the prana, there is a direct impact on the consciousness. And we feel that. We feel that. When we do the meditations, when we do the practices and we observe the quality of mind, we feel that. And then the other approach is focusing on the consciousness has a direct impact on the light, on the prana. Focusing on the consciousness affects the light. So these two principles, it's who we are, it's who we were before we came here, it's who we'll be when we leave, and it's who we are now in various emanations and constructs, in the constructs of our body, of our mind, of our energy. We experience these constructs and we come to yoga and there's an expansion. And the purpose of yoga is what? To liberate the energy, to liberate the mind, to merge with the consciousness. That's the purpose of yoga. That's why the practices were developed. So we have these two principles. And what I really believe and what the ancients taught and what I experienced with Swami Sakyadama is that when you focus on the light, it's much easier to experience the consciousness than if we focus on the consciousness itself. When we apply the mind to the mind and the mind to the consciousness, it's difficult. It's difficult because the consciousness is so abstract. It's so vast. 
but the light has a form. It has a pathway. It's, more sub it's less subtle than the consciousness. So we have something that we're working with while the awareness and the mind is becoming more perceptive, more subtle. So focusing on the light gives a direct experience of the consciousness. And we've had that in our meditations. We've felt the effect that that's had on the consciousness. Isn't it? You feel the effect. And actually after we do all of that work and it's a little bit tricky and then we stop, you feel like you could keep sitting and meditating. You feel very close to the consciousness. Then if we were to just sit there and go through our stages of mental yoga, which has a wonderful purpose too, but it's a little hard. You have to be like Raghunand. You have to be, you know, in this stage of life with still a vitality. The still a vitality and a sincerity. It's very tricky when we start navigating the mind through the mind, especially in that psychic and more subtle dimension. So the whole aim, the whole focus of ancient yoga, the teachings, is to focus on the light and the prana, to understand the consciousness more. <coughs> is that clear, these two principles? In, in the previous immersions, we spoke a lot about these two principles in the whole play of existence. From the yogic point of view, we spoke about how existence came into being from the yogic point of view, that pure and eternal silence, that presence, and the moment that there was a becoming of being, a perceptive quality, that first emanation, that first vibration, that first ray of light, that first sound, was pranic, and that the whole of creation has come into play through this complex web of consciousness and prana. And we really went into that, in, into depth, and right into the individual, the human being, which is known as a prani. A prani is the name we're given. One who contains the chitta, the consciousness, and the prana. And we had a look at how our individual existence has these dimensions, the koshas. We explored the koshas. And we also, you know, in very practical terms, began to understand that our whole life is a pranic interaction that every single thing we do, when we give someone a hug, guess what? We're exchanging prana. And you know, when we put on the boots and we decide to hike up the mountain for three hours, up the steep hill, why do we do that? You see, we think, oh, it's the nature, it clears my mind, I'm having some mental tension, I'll go in the nature, but why? What is it? It's the prana, the quality of prana. You see the fresh air, the pure elements, the ions, that's not prana. Prana is more subtle than that. But that enhances the prana. But when we're up there in the top of the mountain, we're not so aware of the subtle body, how it's expanding, how it's flowing. We're not so aware of the subtle parts of the mind. We're just thinking and feeling good. And, you know, if we go to the shopping centre and after an hour, it's like, we've got to get out of there. <laughs> get me out. Oh. Why is that? It's just taking your prana. <laughs> it's the quality of prana is not so good there. We contract. Mm -hmm. We contract. The air isn't fresh. So we're all the time responding to the prana in the environment. We're just not really established in that more perceptive, subtle way. And that's okay. That's okay. Because the whole point of yoga practices is that it flows into your daily life, isn't it? Mm. If it's not, then the practice isn't working. Mm. The outcome is your perception, the change in your daily life. So the more we do the practices, the more we start to see these pranic interactions in our daily life. And we think, I won't see that person today because that prana, you know, that's a bit challenging. I'm feeling a bit flat. I'll see them tomorrow. I'll do something to, you know, we start to make these choices to balance our prana. And I believe that we all, all of us here, we do that. We do do that because you have to do that to have a yogic lifestyle. You've already done that. You do have a yogic lifestyle. You have that commitment. So you've already 
whether you know it or not, have made these changes based on how you feel energetically, where you want to direct your energy, direct your consciousness. But we come to understand that our whole life is a pranic interaction. The environment, the people, we're constantly in interaction with prana. Really, we're just in one big sea of prana. From the yogic point of view, we're in one big sea of prana. And so now it's time that we get a little bit more subtle. And you see, when we come together in a group like this, it really helps. It really helps. There's a certain sincerity, there's a certain grace, there's a certain generation of energy that really helps us to move more deeply into the practices and to have that experience. And even if when we're doing the practice, you don't see the light or you don't really feel the light, you will experience an effect on the consciousness, on the mind, you will. And every time you come back to the practice, the perception will wake up. You see, we have to wake it up. We have to wake it up. And it is there. You will experience it because it is there. It just takes a little bit of patience. We have this mind, you know, it's been so externalized. So gross, we can say. And now we can't expect that just like that. It's very subtle. So it takes a bit of time. But it is there. And how do we know it's there? Because we're here. This is our core energy. It's our core energy. We're here, it's there. And how is it there? Because of the consciousness. And the more that we understand these concepts and then begin to experience them ourselves, we start to see the beautiful blend, how everything's so connected. And each thing that you do in this field directly impacts something a little more subtle. A little more subtle, a little more subtle. All very interconnected. <laughs>